So she is legit, she is real, she is so cute. So she's well over 100 years old. So that if you find them, you can call me and you can sell them to me. And when I say my event, this was Jonathan Green's event. It's not supposed to sound sad. Excuse me. Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is a fun video, so stick around because it's been a while since I've done a Raggedy Ann unboxing. And that's what I'm doing today in this video. Yay! Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Rachel. And one of my claim to fames, which I've got, I've got a lot of things that I'm known for, believe me, but one of my favorite things, and I'm like waving this in your face because I'm about to open a Raggedy Ann. One of my favorite things is Raggedy Ann. Now we are here in the doll shop today. The phones are going off, Linda's in the back, we're working, we're trying to price dolls, we're trying to do all this stuff that we normally do. Let me just make sure I do this very lightly so we don't slice our Raggedy Ann in half. But this is a doll that I have been very excited about and I have been wanting for her to arrive. Now there's a little bit of lore around this doll because I bought her from somebody that, that looked pretty legit online but I, you know, I wasn't sure. I didn't know them personally. It looked, it looked pretty good. But anyway, I ended up sending them a check in the mail and they deposited the check and then it was crickets. I didn't hear anything from them. And it wasn't like it was that long, but I was, you know how you can kind of jump to conclusions and get a little worried. That's what I did. And anyway, the people have been extremely nice, but the lady ended up falling and going to the hospital. And that's why she couldn't respond to me. She's doing a lot better. But in the meantime, it was driving me crazy. Like I was like, Rachel, you just spent all this money on this Raggedy Ann and you're not gonna get the Raggedy And I was, so anyway, I was jumping to all these conclusions. So this is partly why I'm also very excited that she's here, hopefully in all of her glory. Now, you know me and a lot of you know me very well and you've seen my other unboxing videos with Raggedy Ann's, my giant Raggedy Ann's. I prefer, when I buy a Raggedy Ann, it's usually always a Voland Raggedy Ann, which are the earliest Raggedy Ann's and I, I, even though I love them so much, you'd think I'd have hundreds of them around. I'm very selective. Uh, I enjoy them from afar with other people's and other brands, but when I buy them, it's usually something really rare and special. I don't have a ton of room and the reason why I'm always just looking for the rarest ones is because that's what I like. I really like, I really like rare Voland Raggedy Ann's. That's what I love. And so I haven't bought one in a long time. It's been years and I saw this one online. I had to have her. So she is a rare Voland Raggedy Ann. The reason why I bought this one. Now, when I see them online, and when I get offered them or anything, if it's a Voland, I'm always trying to buy it, of course. They are very rare. But this one, I had to have because she is in, at least from the pictures, incredible condition. So good. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, look. <laughs> she's so pretty. Okay, so the earliest bowl in Raggedy Ann's had hand-painted faces. I don't even have one of those. I hope to get one someday. These are a little bit later. They were produced after 1915. They have printed faces, but it's the earlier printed face than the later printed face. But she was found in a trunk, wrapped up in some cloths from her original owner, and I bought her from an antique store that does not deal in dolls, but they had found her and purchased her with all of the other antiques that they were purchasing. So she is legit, she is real, she is so cute. Looks like she's been, I don't know if she's been stuffed a little bit more or something, but you can see her little, her little patent mark. 1915, that little patent mark right there, they started doing that after 1915. If you find Volan dolls with the hand-painted faces, they're not gonna have that. Those are the earliest ones. Now, I have a book here that I'm gonna show you some of the earliest ones so that if you find them, you can call me and you can sell them to me. How about that? Good deal? I think that's a really good deal. 
<laughs> what do you think, Stanley? Mm -hmm. It's a good deal. She's so cute. Um, I have some other ones here that are this same time frame, and we're going to look at them so that you can see what a typical doll looks like. The condition is usually never like this. They're usually a lot darker. They're usually a lot more played with, have a little bit more water stains. Now she has a little tear right there, which I'm probably going to have Linda patch that and maybe take out a little bit of that stuffing. Look how much stuffing there is right there. That does not feel natural to me. So what we can do is probably uh, cut those strings, pull out a little bit of that stuffing because it's overstuffed. Let's look at her body. She's got her little heart there. But look at this body. I mean, this is just, this doll is from pre-1920. After about 1920 is when they started printing them with the later faces. So these dolls are pre-1920. So she's well over 100 years old and she is so dang cute. We're gonna have Linda, who is here, help just with the little mending with the apron and just different things. But I have never seen one, at least in person for me and in my collection where the dress, which this is such a good dress, this is the print where she is on the cover of the Raggedy Ann Stories book. The dress is not faded at all. Usually when I get these or find them, their dresses are brown. They're not even blue anymore. So she's so cute. Good deal just for fun because we're sitting here and we're hanging out and we're talking raggedy. This is one of my favorite books by Andrew Tabbitt. This is, I recommend this, volumes one and two. He's got so much information and fun memorabilia and all kinds of really in-depth information, but there are some Gruel made raggedy ends in here. Now, get in here so you can see this right here. Now, look at the feet, Stanley, get in there so that they can see the feet. Those are, that is not black. That is, you can tell, look, you can see the stripes through the feet. They painted the feet on these earliest ones. So when you, if you find one like this and the feet are painted black and you can see the stripes beneath, those are the earliest ones made by the Gruel family before Volin started producing them. Super rare, super amazing. I do not have one. I'm looking for one. Send them to me. These super early Volan Raggedy Ann's, which I don't have any here either, have the very early hand-painted faces. So take a look at those faces. You can tell, you can tell that those are hand-painted and they have the Volan look. Early, early, early. Hey, Paul, can you grab that? Paul's here too, everybody. We haven't seen Paul in a while. He's hanging out, helping. They're all totally different. They're just wonderful. I absolutely love them. These are very, very, very rare and they started making these in very early, in around 19, oh gosh. See, it says Volans produced before 1920 or so had hand-painted faces. So they patented them in 1915. So this doll, she could be, these early Volans with the, hand, with the printed faces, the early printed faces were made between 1920 and 1921. See, there's our girl right there. You can see her, can you see her well in the book? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. You can see the two. So what I said earlier in the video is not right. She wasn't made prior to 1915. They were made, they were patented in 1915, but made after that. So the earliest dolls were made around that time, but these printed dolls were made between 1920, 1921, 1922. Look at these sisters right here. Can you see? The faces almost look hand printed, but they're not. And then you can read in the book where you can see kind of the evolution of the changing faces. As the Volans get later, the printing of the faces becomes a lot more apparent. You can tell that they are newer along in the evolution of making them. But my favorite ones, the ones that I'm always looking for, the ones that I will give you a reward if you contact me in addition to buying them. I'll give you another reward, lots of chocolate, are the 1920s oversized Raggedy Ann's. Look at, how, look at the condition these ones are in. They are so amazing. We have three of them here. We have our pair that's over there in the carriage. And then we have a larger Andy who is in the baby um, crib over there. So much fun. There is just so much to look at and do. But as we get a little bit later with the dolls, you can really see 
the difference in the printing of the faces. These ones are fun. They have the one eyelash, which actually we have one in the other case that's a, that's a one eyelash. So these are later dolls. These were made in the late 1920s, and you can tell a big difference between the later 1920s and the early 1920s. So for funsies, let's go look at a couple of the ones we have in our cases just to kind of look at the different faces and just kind of have fun with it. Let's go. One of my favorite videos on our channel is the unboxing video that I did with these, but this is an example of the large oversized raggedies. It's a pair. They are so amazing. I love them. Here's a little Voland. This is a little bit later in the 1920s. It's an Andy and he has the one eyelash. Super, super, super cute. Love him. I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy with him. Isn't she? Look how vibrant she is though. Hard to find him in this kind of condition. So it's kind of crazy. We're using the, we don't even have our lights on, you know. This is how we'd be hanging out if you were here. But see if you can see the, there's the other Voland oversized Andy right there. He's peeking in the, in the crib. He's wonderful. He's in very good condition. He's so good. He's so sweet. Okay, now we're gonna go look at some of our other ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did we just wake up from our nap? Are we yeah, yeah? At school, her teacher calls her Yaya. Hi, Yaya. She says, come on, Yaya. Yaya. Come on, Yaya. Oh, are you fresh and ooey gooey from your nap? Are you so sweet from your nap? Oh, tired, baby. You have a good nap? Yaya? Yaya? Come here. Come here. Come on. What? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so here's our girl, and here, just for comparison, you can see the condition that I often find them. So her dress is actually in really good condition. It's still nice and blue, but just the two faces together, this is how I usually find them, a lot more aged. And you can tell that this girl has been staying out of the sun. <laughs> she has been locked away. She in, don't have as good of a tan. She does not have as good of a tan. But two super super sweet super sweet girls now here's some of the other ones so if i find them even you know it's hard to pass them up but this one she's seen better days but she still has a lot of personality i still really mm -hmm. like her her outfit has is not nearly as blue it's uh, faded a lot this raggedy ann stories book oh yeah signed by johnny gruel and it has a camel with the wrinkled knees illustration that he did and there's a little cutout of a story that happened where a little girl Stanley are you able to do that with the baby mm -hmm. here let me show let me show you guys he's filming with Hall and Diane <laughs> yes but anyway I've read this before but a little girl went to a book fair where Gruel was there entertaining about 50 children and the little girl just said that she could draw the camel with the wrinkled knees better and that was her drawing and isn't that sweet and so then he drew it again and he said to Helen with many happy wishes, Johnny Gruel, and you can draw the camel better. I just thought that was so funny. So cute. She was five and a half years old. She walks up to a famous illustrator and is like, I can do that better than you, a five and a half year old. Are you going to do that, Holland again? Huh? I think that was the little doll that went with it. But when I found that, I, I had to purchase that. So super, super sweet. We're going to go back and show Linda. I know she'll be able to clean her up a little bit. And she'll be part of our collection here at the doll shop. Hi, Holly and Diane. Are we working hard? Huh? Do you have everyone wrapped around your little fan glove? Mm -hmm. hmm? She always cries when she wakes up from her nap. She comes back to Earth. Earth to Holly and Diane. It's her favorite thing. No, she likes to also take her favorite things and throw them on the floor. Now we're back okay. in the back with Linda. Hey, Linda. Hi. Oh, you're, what you working on? All kinds of things. Yeah, all I know. kinds of things. Well, I we had a raggedy project. We could actually show what's going on with our raggedy ends right here. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was I, I didn't even tell Linda we're not prepared. She's gonna be helping me because we have two Jonathan Green Voland inspired Raggedy Ann's. That's the outfits that he put them in, the top one right there. But my other one doesn't have any clothes. 
So antique floral print, it's gonna be fantastic. We were thinking that one would work, which that one at least would look very antique and wonderful. Right. But we have some other ones that are gonna work too. So that's what's going on. But Linda, the reason why we're back here is because <laughs> we are. I got this super sweet Raggedy Ann in the mail. This one right here. She's okay. really wonderful. And there's not a whole lot that needs to be done. She does have a tear on her neck, which I think we might patch, but you can let me know what you think. And she feels overstuffed to me. So turn her out. Well, no, look. This one's stuffed just as much. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't that feel like it almost feels like too much? But she has the same. She has that same bulge right there right. on her neck. We're going to have to pinch it. And Do you think we should patch it? Because uh, I think the tension is why it ripped. Or there's a little knot we could even right just there. leave it alone. It's okay with no, me. No, we're going to fix it. But we aren't going to put a patch on it. Just do something to reinforce it a little bit. Over 100 years old, just And you wonder how they like, survived. Yeah, well, she was found in a trunk, wrapped up in quilts. That's why. Super rare. Just to show, like, a typical condition. This is a t typical condition. Right. Happens. They wear out, especially if they're in the sun. And this girl... If you, we showed her body earlier, it's it's just like from day one. It's amazing. It is. This is how we usually find them. Right. And I thought, you're bringing this one back for me to patch. Yes. <laughs> okay. Super. Yeah. How are you? It's the next day, actually. So we are still on this video, but this is going to be the rest of this video. We're just going to be sitting here chatting. It's a little, it's a, what we call a talking head video and you know I like to talk. So I wanted to, I want to just kind of talk about how I, how I'm feeling and maybe how you're feeling. Now, I know a lot of our friends that are watching didn't know Jonathan Green personally. Maybe you knew him online, maybe you knew of him, maybe you saw his comments or you saw a program. A lot of you knew him personally and are deeply grieving his loss. We, we're all experiencing all different levels of loss here when it comes to Jonathan Green. Jonathan and I bonded over Raggedy Ann. His first program that he did for the virtual doll convention was on Raggedy Ann. We did several programs together on Raggedy Ann. And anytime I ever got one, the first person I showed it to was Jonathan. So yesterday was really fun, unboxing the doll and having that moment. And I know how much he would have loved the doll. And as you can see from the video, I was having a really good time. There was a lot of joy in my heart and it was a really fun day. And then when I got in my car to leave and start driving home, it just kind of washed over me the grief did kind of like kind of like a, an ocean it almost felt like it just kind of crept up and washed over me and as i was driving home i just was thinking about the fact that he is not here and that he didn't get to share in this moment and enjoy this doll and correct me in my video because i inevitably probably said something wrong and he because he knew all the little facts like there is so much to know. I have a broad knowledge of a lot of different things. There's a lot of, there, I, what I like to say is, I know a little bit about a lot of things, and Jonathan knew a lot a bit about a lot of things, but the thing that he knew tons and tons, like every detail, every detail about was Raggedy Ann. Even on every single tag, if there was like this little difference, or it said this or that, it would make a difference, and he, and he just knew all those things. And in a way, I relied on him a lot because we were just really good friends and we liked to talk about Raggedy Ann. And when you have that, it's kind of like any relationship or, or kind of, or maybe like a parent in a way. I didn't think of him as a parent, but I just always thought of him as somebody that would be there that was older than me and in this industry. And he was somebody that I could just always kind of bounce ideas off of and just, man, I miss him. He would have really enjoyed this moment. Look at these dolls. This is the one that Jonathan made, and this is the one that we purchased yesterday. This face is one of my favorite Bolin faces. So this one right here is very irresistible. It's the first phase of the printed faces, even though it almost looks kind of hand-drawn. That's Jonathan's. That's printed on two. I wonder how he did that. I just love it. Look at that. So sweet. Aren't they special? 
So I was gonna have Linda make an outfit, but I actually decided because I needed the other one that he made to be in an outfit for when we go to UFDC, but, uh, and she can, but I also just thought I can take an outfit off of one of my other antique ones and put it on Jonathan's when she makes the trip to UFDC. So if you're watching this right now, this video is going to last forever. So in the future, the event has already passed by the time you're watching this video. What I'm talking about UFDC is the United Federation of Doll Clubs. And it's a big conglomeration of doll clubs that are across the country and the world. And every year there's a big convention and they're all in different cities. It'll be so great one day if it's ever back in Denver, but I know the altitude was really hard on some people. A lot of people had a, had problems with the altitude, but when it was in Denver, we had a bus that went from the convention hotel to the doll shop for like two straight days and just went back and forth and we just had a huge open house and had tons of people here. I'll never forget it. I All I did the entire week was drive from the hotel to here, from the hotel to here, and we did sleep at home. We didn't sleep at the hotel, we slept at home. Saved a little bit of money there. And it was amazing. The convention this year, I was not planning on going for any other reason than it's still really hard for me to leave Miss Holland Diane. Uh, I have never left her before. This will be the first time that I have left her. She's in very good hands with her father and her school, which she'll be in her school uh, the week that I'm gone, but it's still, a lot. Derek, he's wonderful, but, um, and I don't like to say but, but as, as her mother, I do, it'll be a really good taste for him actually to, to just handle everything from dressing to the diapers, to the food, to the organizing, to all the things which he'll be able to handle it completely, but I'm going to be gone a long time. It's not like he's handling it for an afternoon or even a couple days that we're, we're going to be gone for an entire week. Now, I was just gonna go for a few days and then come back and I want to see people and I want to talk about Jonathan. So Jonathan's my big reason that I'm making this trip at this very busy time in my life being a mother because I know how much everyone out there, so many of our Raggedy and Katie Cruz and, and Katie Cruza and cloth doll friends and so many of our friends just from the doll community as a whole that collect all different types of things love him and we miss him so much <sighs> oh i don't i don't even know exactly the words to say i i don't want to get on a i don't want to get on a soapbox and to go round and round about it but you know i i i really miss him and i wished I, 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 you know, his choice is extremely hard for us to, to understand and to sit with. It's just, you know, that was his choice. I wish that I could have helped him figure it out. So if you're out there, maybe you're watching this for some reason, maybe you stumbled on this video. If you are in a dark place and you're not thinking of how to get to the other side, if the light at the end of the tunnel feels insurmountable, I want you to know that there are so many people out there that do care and that will help. When you're in that moment, when it just feels like too much and you just don't want to go there, I know a lot of us can understand and, and feel that pain, but there are so, we, the world needs your light. The world needs you in it. Maybe this will meet, touch someone, you know, look at your raggedy hands, do anything that you can do, reach out, just know. Know there's people out there, me included, that loves and cares about you and wants you as a part of this world. The raggedy thing for me is it's going to keep going. I'm not stopping, of course. So fun to get a new doll and so fun to share them. But dolls, they have, they carry so much more than, you know, like when Derek buys a video game, it's like, oh, it's a new video game. There's no sentimental attachment to it. But when we buy dolls and we experience dolls, there's so many layers to the entire experience. A lot of times when we buy dolls, it's for, it, it can be just because you love that doll. You don't even, you don't need a reason or you don't need any kind of reason other than you like the doll to buy the doll. But there are a lot of reasons why we keep doing it. For me, it's because I loved these when I was a child. They were accessible to me. I could have fun with them. I just, I liked them. That's a big part of it. It's just, I plainly like them. 
But now I'm going off on a, on a raggedy adventure here in the next several months. And a lot, and it's, and it's all tied to Jonathan Green. So I think my Raggedy Ann career as a collector and as an enthusiast and as a champion for collecting and sharing in the love of Raggedy Ann is going to be dedicated to Jonathan Green. It's just always gonna be dedicated to Jonathan Green, I think. Even though I loved him before, it's just something that I can do. Thanks for sticking around if you're still here. I've said this many times before, but it's just so true. Like I'm never, of course, I'm not gonna sit here and talk about, you know, my videos are always very different and we do all different kinds of things, but just in the rest of my career, I'm always going to talk about important people. And two of the most important people in my doll career are my mother, Diane Hoffman, and Jonathan Green. And, you know, they, they are the stepping stones. It's sad to me that Jonathan decided to end his life when I wish I could have talked him off his ledge. I really do, of course, you always wish that for somebody. But there was a few times now, I was never ever thinking of taking my life, of course, but there was times when I was really low and sad and confused and didn't know what to do and in situations where it just felt like too much with like trying to run the business early on in the doll community and Jonathan was one that I could just kind of bounce stuff off of and he was very uncomplicated and simple about it. I would get real off into the woods and start worrying a lot and worrying all this stuff and he would help me with that. Losing him has taught me a lot and one of the things that it has taught me is, you know, I check in with people a lot more and I don't just assume somebody's fine. I just thought that he was fine and he wasn't. It's hard because you can't just go around thinking everyone's gonna be in that place, but it's okay to check in with people and just like make sure they're okay for real. Like, how are you really doing? You know, anyway. I think these are very special girls. Aren't they so special? And if you didn't see my last video about UFDC and what I'm doing there is, unfortunately, the only bad thing about my event is that there's only 75 spots. And when I say my event, this was Jonathan Green's event. He was doing a Kate Crusa event with a doll and a presentation on Kate Crusa for the UFDC. And now I am speaking in his place and sponsoring the event. Our company is sponsoring the event on his behalf. It's all, it's all about him. I wish more people could physically come. I know everyone's gonna wanna be there and I wish we could open it up more. If you're from UFTC and you're watching this, like, can we get, can we open it up more and just have more meals? Like part of the reason is because there's only a certain number of dolls, but can we open it up more? I probably should be talking to them and not the entire world on YouTube, but I, I want to open it up more, but I, I don't think we're going to be able to because they're already planning so much, but what I'm doing, I'm going to put online. The doll that I am doing is going to be available online. All the proceeds go to a charity on his behalf. We have pictures, we have a paper doll. We have just a really sweet forever friends paper doll for him. Diana Binding helped me with that. So oh, I don't know. This is not how I plan to end to end this video, but I just can't not talk about him when getting this sweet girl. So it's not, I'm not, it's not supposed to sound sad. Excuse me. Today's a really happy day. We had a wonderful doll collector come in and she bought a doll for her class that she's coming up with and wonderful antique doll and it was just it was a really fun day to be in this business i love this business i love what i do here not a day goes by that i don't thank my mom for entrusting me with it if she didn't think i could do it i know she wouldn't have left it to me so that in itself is a big motivation for me and we don't run the business at all like we how we used to. We run it different. You know, we run it kind of my my way and my my way of doing it. And it's a lot of fun. And then how we used to do it when I ran it with my mom was a lot of fun too. It's just different. Different lives. Holland Diane is napping right now, by the way. So that's why you and I get to have this big long chat. If you have never heard of Jonathan Green, give him a Google. There's probably if you Google him you're probably gonna mostly find my YouTube videos for the most part. I know you're out there, Jonathan, and I hope you're having fun, and I hope you're doing all kinds of raggedy things with my mom. But, oh, aren't they special? 
Okay, so it was fun to chat. I have other things that I'm going to share, more exciting things as we ramp up to the event, but there's so many more people interested in the event that are actually going to be able to get in. I'm thinking of doing something like the centerpieces that I'm doing for the banquet. Uh, we're making them so everyone can take a piece of the centerpiece. I'm thinking of offering that online and just try to make almost everything that is happening at the event available online because I know I know how many people just miss him and love him so again if you're still here thank you I love you I it's amazing to me that I can have this platform and share exactly how I'm feeling with so many friends out there which is you and you understand you you understand and I think it's very special that I feel comfortable enough to do this. I did not start out this way. And we have developed a really, really special friendship over the years, you and me. So thank you for that. And we'll see you in the next video. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.